Welcome to another light bite on creative lighting design. This part is titled Light and Space and it will be presented to you by Mike Simpson. In this presentation, we will look at the way we perceive patterns and how this can influence the way we integrate luminaires into a space. Louis Kalf was the founder of design here at Philips. In the early days, before lighting design was thought about, he visioned how architecture and lighting could come together through an understanding of space, form, colour and materials. Only when the light of a luminaire arranges a space in light and dark areas, when the chosen forms, colours and materials are made visible in a way meant by the architect, can we speak of lighting architecture. When we talk about lighting design, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Is it a calculation tool like Dialux, where we can work out the mathematics of lighting, calculating levels, uniformity and glare, etc? Or do you start with an imagination of how the space is and how you would like to see it lit, of surfaces, of brightnesses and colours? They are two different processes, which are both required but maybe they aren't often thought of together. The calculation is a prop we use to make sure the final effect will deliver the right light in the right place. And the numbers help us in this evaluation. The imagination is a mental picture of what you want to achieve, but without a lot of experience, there's no guarantee of the final result. So we're going to look at some ideas which will help you join these two approaches to lighting design together. When you create a lighting design, you will place luminaires on the ceiling in a pattern, usually determined from a calculation. The luminaires are placed in a regular pattern because the calculation has told you that will give you the best result. But did you know that you may be creating subliminal patterns as the eye tries to join up the dots or luminaires? And in doing so, you are creating shapes which should align with the architecture of the space. This is known as Gestalt theory, where the combination of the parts is different to the individual parts. Lighting is generally provided by a large number of luminaires, which we perceive in configurations and patterns. We always try to understand and so simplify what we see, and we do this subconsciously. How we perceive groups of shapes has been categorised by the German psychologist of the Gestalt school in the 30s, known as the Laws of Perception. The Gestalt Law of Continuation states that the eye sees a geometrical form, even if it is not complete. So a dotted line is perceived as being continuous, and a square can be suggested by just the corners on their own. Although a series of downlights and uplights provides even illumination to the floor and wall, we see them as a continuous row emphasising the length of the corridor. Patterns of lighting are created in the ceiling by using spots and black slots. The slots around the perimeter combine four spots. The coves in the ceiling divide the slots into different groups and combine them into a square. You can see different configuration like points, lines, squares and rectangles. Judgments of an environment as being orderly or chaotic, are always made with reference to the background and context. Irregular arrangements of architectural elements, like lighting equipment, furniture and partitions, seem more orderly and less distracting when seen against plain backgrounds. Everything which is higher than eye level will be perceived against the context of the ceiling structure and should therefore be carefully related to the visual organisation of the ceiling. Often it's the other way round. The furniture is not related to the ceiling. So the ceiling, including the luminaires, should be as directionless as possible and visually neutral. Luminaires should be linked to the furniture rather than the ceiling when the furniture is above eye level, such as in a supermarket. We are looking for a layout that relates to the dimensions of the room. Your calculation may have told you that 12 luminaires should be placed in an even pattern over the room. But the program doesn't have any intuition about how you imagine the room should appear, 
or if there are any outside architectural influences. The Gestalt law of proximity occurs when elements are placed close together. They tend to be perceived as a group. So here we see 12 squares rearranged as two lines of six. Is this a more appropriate arrangement for the way in which the room has been designed? Here the same number of luminaires appear as six groups of two, as the luminaires in each group are much closer to each other. If you're concerned about the effect on the calculated numbers, you can always rerun the calculation to see if it's acceptable. These decisions about patterns and layout will not be generated by the calculation, they come from our intervention as designers. Here we see the law of proximity in practice. 16 individual points of light are seen as a single square. The Gestalt law of equality states that similar elements are recognized and grouped mentally. The bigger the difference, the clearer the message. On the left, we tend to group the circles together and the rectangles together but neither one is particularly dominant over the other. On the right, the rectangles are a more obvious group and dominate over the circles. These effects are often found in installations where different types of general lighting are applied or where accent lighting is placed in between the general lighting. A real installation dem demonstrates the dominance of the larger rectangles in the ceiling. So let's see how this may be used by means of an example. A single story building is composed of octagonal units in open communication with each other. The central area of each air unit has been indicated by a darker square in the ceiling, but this is only there to help you identify the patterns over the ceiling. We're looking for a solution related to the dimensions of the room or the grid of the building. We choose a type of luminaire related to a layout we have in mind when making a lighting design. The type of luminaire you take makes an enormous difference to the perception of the space. Try to imagine what you would see in perspective. Using a typical 600 by 600 square fitting and applying the calculated spacing, we would get an evenly spaced pattern over the ceiling but now the arrangement doesn't complement the shape of the room. The squares give no directions when placed in just a grid. In this example of a car showroom, the arrangement bears no relationship to the space of the building, or in this case, the cars displayed within it. Rearranging them into a pattern focused around the central square of the octagon creates a more logical pattern. We see three groups of three octagons, that match the three octagonal shapes of the building. This signals to the customer that this is not just an ordinary showroom, but one where attention to detail has gone into every aspect of the design. Using a linear luminaire, there are a number of possible ways of arranging them. Lines give direction, make the space look longer and narrower, and do not tie up with the overall shape of the building. This linear arrangement does match the ceiling, but not the building. So as a lighting designer, you can challenge design decisions, which may have been made without the th same thought process that you have gone through. Using a linear luminaire in this way provides a more logical solution. We read the arrangement as three squares placed central to each of the octagons. So depending on whether you want to create a strong guidance, you have to pick a luminaire with a certain shape but also the type of layout you have in mind will demand for a certain type of luminaire. And it's always possible to use a combination such as squares and circular downlights. A combination of squares and rectangles is more difficult because the shapes resemble each other too much. Here we have deployed a linear luminaire to form crosses which follow the law of proximity and form a more dominant square the arms make the visual link with the octagonal form of the unit so as to underline the architectural concept. At the same time, although the lighting arrangement itself is visually simple, it succeeds in creating harmony with the whole space. The third arrangement uses circular downlights, 
Again, the regular pattern generated from the calculation does nothing to match the space. Circles are the most neutral shape and can easily be rearranged in different ways to suit the shape of the building. Here they have been arranged to complement the hexagonal building grouped around the centre of each element. So the type of luminaire you choose makes an enormous difference in perception of the space. When you make a design, you look at the two-dimensional ceiling plan. But imagine that you see the ceiling in perspective. What do you see? Lines give direction. They make the space look longer and narrower. Squares give no direction when placed in a grid. Circles also give no direction, but are less dominant. So depending upon how strong the guidance you want to create depends on the shape of the luminaire. In this light bite, we have shown the importance of combining calculation and aesthetics to create a more imaginative design that is appropriate to the space and how it will be used.